Hello, and welcome to Micro Teaching. Today we are looking at A and A star skills, and we are looking at evaluating interpretations. Interpretations are different ways of viewing the same event. And the interpretations of the Renaissance that we are evaluating in this session are, number one, was it a revolution? Or number two, was it irrelevant? Which means, did it not matter at all? We're going to start with the thesis, which is interpretation one, which holds that the Renaissance was a medical revolution, that it changed the world completely. And here's our evidence for this. As the medieval period ends, the power of the church declines, and Vesalius proves that Galen is wrong, which sets people off thinking for the first time since the ancient Greek period. Added to this is the invention of printing, which means that everybody's new ideas can now be spread rapidly across Europe. This spirit of experimentation led to an explosion in new ideas by looking at the natural world. This looking at the natural world was heavily influenced by the Greeks and Romans. The first example of an important new discovery was made by a man called Van Leeuwenhoek, and he developed the first microscope. And using that microscope, for the first time, he saw the bacteria which caused disease and decay. Before him, nobody had seen these creatures. The next great individual was a man called Paré. Before Paré, people would seal gunshot wounds by pouring boiling oil on them, and they would close the arteries after an amputation by putting a red hot iron over the stump to seal together all the veins and arteries, and this would cause people to die of pain. Paré worked out, by chance, that using an ancient Greek ointment of oil of roses, turpentine and egg, you could heal gunshot wounds even better than with the boiling oil. He also worked out that you could take ligatures, which were small pieces of silk string, and tie together someone's veins and arteries after an amputation, which was much kinder and meant they didn't die of shock. The last great individual of the Renaissance, well, the last great individual of the Renaissance we're going to look at today was a man called Harvey. And he proved that blood circulates around the body and is driven by a pump. This proved Galen and Hippocrates wrong because they believed that the blood was one of the four humours and was used up like a fuel. If you look at interpretation one as a whole, it looks like the Renaissance has led to huge medical progress and change. But maybe it didn't. Let's look at the antithesis, which is interpretation two, which holds the Renaissance was irrelevant. Let's start with this. Vesalius discovered that the human jawbone was in one part and not two. Galen made these mistakes because he was dissecting animals. But who cares if the human jawbone comes in one bone and not two? It doesn't lead to anybody getting better. Let's move to printing. We've said this was a great discovery because new ideas were spread all over Europe. But hardly anyone could read at this point. So even if you could get those ideas out, they weren't being widely read by most people in Europe. We've also said that people were having lots and lots of new ideas, but these were only really occurring in universities. If you went around to a village in Britain at this time, they would have no idea that people had made all these discoveries. Van, Le Van Leeuwenhoek developed the first microscope and saw bacteria the first time, but he didn't actually know that they caused disease, so that didn't lead to any cures either. And as for Paré, well, what he did could have made things worse. At least if you were sealing someone's stump with a red hot iron, that heat would kill the germs. The new ligatures that he introduced actually spread infection, and many people died afterwards from the infection they got in the original operation. And finally, let's look at Harvey. 
We've said that he made a great discovery because he discovered that blood, he discovered that blood circulates around the body. But again, so what? It's like my car. Just because I know that petrol goes from my petrol tank to my engine doesn't mean I can fix the car if it's broken. It's the same with Harvey. None of these new ideas have led to any cures at all, which supports this, that largely the Renaissance was irrelevant. So we've got two conflicting views. If you can do that, you're a B grade, B grade student. An A grade student can do this. This is the synthesis, and this is the thesis plus the antithesis, which stated that new ideas are correct and useful later, but help for most people stays the same as in the medieval period. They're still going to wise women, they're still going to physicians, they're still going to barber surgeons, and all their treatments are still influenced by the four humours and Galen. Because although these people had been proved wrong, nobody had come up with a better cure. See if you can do these two questions. If you can, you're making the right steps. Can you now think about how significant was the med medical renaissance? And secondly, was there more change in this period? Or was there more continuity? Did things change more, or did they stay the same? Thank you very much for listening. More videos to follow.